All right. Grave digger! Hey, you guys are here. Hold on a second. I got to talk to you guys. I uh, just getting ready to go out and play with the, uh, the grave digger. It's like 82 degrees outside, so I figured, hell, why not? Let's bash a little bit. So I wanted to uh, take the grave digger out. But being I got you guys here, I got something for you. So um, let me go ahead and put this back over there. And then uh, when you guys come back, I want to talk to you guys about some additions I did to the Gen 7. Stay tuned. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, um, you know, I uh, I did some work on Ashton's Gen 7, but uh, before we get into that, um, I have a question from a subscriber. So his name is Jesus Vega. Nice to meet you. Um, glad you're, you like the channel. Um, you know, you're, uh, one of your employees is a good friend of mine, uh, Paul, and uh, he kind of... Uh, Gave me some insight on you watching me, and I think that's awesome, Jesus. And I hope you uh, continue watching and enjoy the channel. So, uh, one of the other questions that was brought up is uh, people, you know, ask me about the the term bashing. Like, what is bashing? What's crawling? Um, and if you're new to that that type of atmosphere, let me break it down to you. So, um, there's three main categories uh, to the RC world, really, when it revolves around RC cars. You have bashing, you have crawling, and you also have racing. So racing is kind of set forward. Everybody should kind of, you know, realize that if you, you know, if you watch NASCAR, that's racing. You're racing around some kind of track, right? Um, so that's the same thing in the RC world is there's a track and you race around it. Um, you know, some tracks are different. Some tracks are dirt, oval, carpet. You know, there's a wide variety in there. Uh, when it comes down to crawling, crawling has uh, got its own subcategories and stuff like that. But the main part of crawling is just, you know, crawling over rocks, crawling over a pillow if you're doing with a little tiny, uh, you know, 24 scales. Um, and then you've also got kind of a branch off of that, which kind of fits into the same category. It's just a little different. And that's called trailing. So that it's if you're going down a dirt trail, you're climbing into, uh, you know, this little hill going through the woods and stuff like that, you know, you're just, you got two different types of the, those trucks. You got, you know, ones that can crawl steep inclines and get up on top of something, or you got something you're just, you're just, you know, like standard four wheel driving, you know, uh, trail riding. And then you have bashing. So bashing is a, is a huge category and a lot of people love it. We do too here at SK Hobbies. And Ultimately, it's just having fun with your RC and ripping it. But there is different categories in that bashing. You got the guys that uh, just rip it around in the dirt, rip it around in the grass, ripping it up and down the street, you know, racing it. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a race, but to them, they're going really fast and it's racing down the street. So you got that aspect of it too. Um, and then if you've checked out some of uh, my videos in the past with... Uh, the AZRC Bashers, there's a whole event that we do all kinds of different uh, bashing stuff. You have, um, you know, the small uh, the small bashing portion of it, RC21. You're, you know, you're jumping off a little ramp and trying to hit these little numbers uh, to, to hit 21 to win. Uh, you have like the Monster Jam. Their version of the Monster Jam is you're taking off on a ramp against somebody and you're racing them and you hit that ramp and you jump up. And you got to race around the cones and come back and hit the center ramp. And the first one that hits the center ramp wins. Um, so you got that. That's still kind of considered bashing. It's not a, totally a competition, but it can be. Uh, there is a winner that, that comes out of it. But, you know, we that go out and do it, it's just all for fun. You know, if, if, you, if you get beat, you get beat. Um, and then you have like super senders, um, you know, like Rich Duper Bash and RC21 that want to send that RC to the moon, right? So you got that type of bashing that comes on too. And some people turn those into competitions and turn them into 
races who can hit the ramp the first you know the first and send it the farthest land on their wheels um so you've got you've got those those two types and then you got people that that classify that crawling side into um you know competition days where you go out to a competition or you got it like trail days where you're just going out with your buddies and hitting a trail and doing a little bit of trailing and crawling so hopefully that answers some of your guys' questions. I know that it was kind of high, high end looking in on it. There's a lot more details and some people, you know, may not like what I say, but you know, it is what it is. That's just how we look at it. And I'm not going to go into super detail on it. So anyways, let's get back to the main topic. Let's talk about the Gen 7 and some of the modifications we've done to make this thing perform better. So let me get you over to the other camera and uh, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so here we go. We've got the Gen 7. As you guys can see, I've got new tires on this bad boy. Uh, we were rocking um, some uh, KLM 3 tires on this with the plastic rims that came with the Gen 7. We have since upgraded it to the aluminum Endura rims, which my son really likes red, so we got red rims. And then we've got the Hyrax tires. These are in the G8 compound. So we've got that going on. Uh, we've already done the body, but what's underneath is what's going to change change some things here. So, if we go ahead and remove this cover off. Look at this. It doesn't stick up anymore. So, we've relocated the electronics that used to be sitting on a little mount up on the top here. And that mount weighed heavy. Um, and it sat right here in the center. So, what I did is took some scrap aluminum and... I made this little plate right here. Just bent some, bent some metal, some aluminum, folded it over and bolted it in right there on the top shock holes. And kind of, it's kind of sets at an angle on the lip there. So, I mean, it don't move at all. It's good. Got it bolted into place, relocated the electronics, the ESC and the receiver and relocated it using some double sticky back tape there. And then, I pulled out the the stock motor, the stocks hex fly motor, and I put in the Holmes Hobby Trailmaster Sport, the 550, and this is the uh, 13 turn. So I got that put in there. I was running this in one of the Gen 8s, and we're not really using that Gen 8 very much anymore. So I pulled the motor back out of it, put the Gen 8 uh, back into its normal configuration, and got that bad boy mounted in here for my son. So the other thing we also did, if I turn this over, is we replaced the transmission plate or your main chassis plate right underneath here. So we've got the Vader Gen 7 chassis plate installed. Now, there was some modifications we had to do to get this into place. Uh, it wasn't really that bad, but right here, if you see, you can see I scratched it up a little bit, but... On the end, I had to make that hole bigger. And the reason why is because this has set screws that go in to hold your links. So originally, these links are mounted here on these holes right there. They're mounted on the outside here. But what this does is take those links and move them underneath like you would see on your SCX24 or your, your Element uh, platforms or the TRX4. You'll see that stuff in the inside. So that Vader plate does that mounting and re moves those down to there. So we got that done. And then, uh, so we had to make and, and make that hole bigger. There's a zip tie in the way right there. And then we had to make that hole bigger so we could actually fit the 1.5 millimeter uh, MIP tool hex driver in there and to be able to move the set screw in and out for those. The uh, last thing we did is we replaced the shocks. So let's see if you can get a better, you can see we've got, we'll show you that angle. We put on the TRX4 stock shocks off of the TRX4 Sport. So these are all four white springed or white bar springed or whatever it is. You know, it's that uh, 0.3 inch pound uh, compression spring that comes with them stock on the, on the TRX4 Sport. So we got those put on there. <clears throat> Eventually I'm gonna upgrade the, uh, the springs and I'm actually gonna go back to the stock springs where I believe it's the, the green 
in the front, and I believe it's no, it's the green in the rear, and it's the standard spring in the front, which are heavier. I believe they're uh, 0.4 and 0.45 inch pound springs that we're gonna put on it. So we're gonna get that eventually done up uh, and get those springs done. But uh, inside of here, we also have the pin spring mods done on this for now. But until we, uh, until I get the, uh, the other springs, that's the way we're gonna run with it with the pin spring mods. I still have one more upgrade I wanna get done. I'm gonna replace these axles from the stock axles we're going to upgrade to the we're going to upgrade to the Gen 7 Sport portal axles that's going to take and uh add a little bit of more height here and at that point I don't care about the springs anymore we can go ahead and pull the sp pen spring mod back out but what it's going to do is get that servo off of the axle and put it up here so we're going to get that and then we're going to get a better uh steering radius right now we're getting about that much steering radius we're going to get a lot more steering radius once we uh, get that servo off of the, the front there. So let me go ahead and bring you guys back up. All right. So uh, it's kind of wanted to show you guys what we've done before we uh, get this out on the trail. We're going to take it out and do some trail testing on it and see how much better it improved. Um, I think it's going to be a lot. You know, we changed where the uh, the center of gravity of that having that, that motor setting here and then you got the electronics setting way up here and getting that that top heaviness out of it and bringing it out to the ends getting it down here got it a little lower than it was setting way up here i think it's going to perform a heck of a lot better so uh we're going to get this and we'll probably put it out on my uh my backyard trail that i'm creating the course and i hope you guys are enjoying that but we've got some more more videos coming on that one and um and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do some testing there, and then we're going to take it out to one of our uh, uh, crawling trailing locations, and we're going to test it out there uh, here in the next, next couple of weeks. Um, so if you guys got any questions or comments or want to know what else we've got going on, jump down in that comment section and hit me up. Let me know. Hey, but I, I hope you guys don't, don't forget to like, subscribe, and bash that bell. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the channel, and I uh, hope you guys are staying cool because summer is is here for us in Arizona. So we're going to be getting some night crawling in. But don't forget, don't forget about my channel. And we will be working all the way through summer and getting content out for you. So uh, I'm Stitch, SK Hobbies AZ. I'm out.